1066, basically a Game of Thrones. And um, on January the 5th that year, Edward, after a series of strokes, is going to die. And um, in the Bayer Tapestry, is, um, and not just, um, it, it would seem very probable that on his deathbed, he designated, he had a bit of a habit of designating different people as he designated uh, William in 1051 as his successor. And uh, on his deathbed, it would seem that he designated Harold Godwinson as the future, you know, the next king. And on January the 6th, whether he did or didn't, Harold has been waiting for this to happen, um, immediately goes into action and has himself crowned King of England by an Archbishop of Canterbury who actually hadn't been approved by the Pope, interestingly. So anyway, we have a new King of England, January the 5th, the day after the death of Edward the Confessor, Harold is King of England. Within days, William gets news of this and gathers his uh, barons around him and convinces them and it's a huge sort of diplomatic victory if you like you know imagine the perilous expedition of a you know you know, all said and done he was a sort of simple prince within the frankish kingdom he's his project is to go across with an army and conquer a viable state england and you know across the channel and all the risks that that involves and he's going to convince his nobles to follow him and allies to follow him in them extraordinary diplomacy of course, the promise of spoils and his proven track record as a military leader uh, count for a lot in that. Um, he's got, also going to carry out an extraordinary diplomatic offensive where he's going to secure at best aid, at worst benevolent you know, neutrality from um, the King of France, a, um, from Count Baldwin of Flanders, remember. Uh, the, Pope, the Pope will send a standard which William will uh, carry into the Battle of, uh, at Hastings, you know, symbolising papal support. And so he's getting, as it were, Europe on his side. And he's going to assemble men. He's going to assemble men, an army, men, horses, materiel, all the ships and everything at Dives. Um, uh, one interesting source, a, a contemporary poet, talks of... Uh, 700 less four ships so 696 ships which is actually quite a feasible number numbers vary of course um but around 700 ships maybe 8,000 men mostly norman but also from you know french and Brittany and flanders and so on remember too that um there's another claim to the throne um we've had these uh, viking kings the vikings across in scandinavia saying look uh, edward the confessor has died there's a kind of void politically a dynastic void there. Um, you know, William of Normandy is going to try and jump into that void, but we could try to. And so there's actually going to be a second pre pretender to the throne, Harold with an A, Hardrada, the severe king of Norway. And um, that's him bottom right here, incidentally. And um, he's going to make an attack onto England. Uh, around 9,000 guys, 300 long ships landing in the northeast of England just before William comes across, William being, of course, very much aware of this Viking claim. William, what he's going to do in this situation is just play a waiting game. And then I've, I've listed the dates because it's it's not just a coincidence, all of this. He's just being very, very intelligent. Um, he knows that autumn storms come earlier in the North Sea. So if the Vikings want to go across, they've got to do it first. And that English boats on patrol in the south of uh, England um uh get drawn up by viking invasion and so on so he's just going to wait and if you look at the, the chronicles tend to talk about william waiting for the weather to be clement and you know uh, uh propitious and so on but if you look at the dates there's more than a coincidence 8th of september harold demobilizes troops on the south coast his third his sort of militia army they've got to you know, take in harvests and stuff and plus we've got this viking threat looking his lap and he's had them mobilized for the last couple of months and he sends the fleet around to london uh, because of you know, potential Viking threats. 12th of September, William is going to move his armada, which has been gathered in Lower Normandy, further up the coast to the Somme River area, you know, a closer crossing across. Um, and then on the 20th of September, the Vikings hit Yorkshire. Uh, after winning a first battle, um, uh, Harold is going to march north so our Harold, Harold Godwinson, King Harold now of England, is going to march north from London, 200 miles up, actually catch the Vikings unaware, win, win a famous bat battle at a place called Stamford Bridge, in the process killing um, 
his own brother Tostig, who'd been a rebel for a while, and the Viking Harold Hardrada. Um, so that happens. Uh, but he's up in North Yorkshire now, in the north. And um, that's where he's going to get news of a landing on the south coast of England, because William, having heard of uh, the Vikings' arrival in that battle up in the north, is going to set sail on 28th of September, um, so three days after Harold's rout of the Norwegians at Stamford Bridge, William is sailing across, 29th of September he is landing, and the stage is set for the, the, the battle, landing unopposed after a night crossing on the Sussex coast, um, and you see the crossing happening here, uh, landing at Pevensey at the bottom here. Um, there we go. The stage is now set, Harold gets news of William's arrival, he has to go back down and look at this map. He's going back down from close to York, down beyond London now. So those 200 uh, miles, another 50 miles to get to the south coast. Um, William has come across um, and is camping out, starting to build castles and things. And um, when the English take up position on a hill um, uh, on October the 13th, um, they're tired from their walk back down and so on. William gets news of that from his scouts and the morning marches up and the morning of the 14th of October, 1066, uh, around nine o'clock, we get into the Battle of Hastings, which is going to last right through dusk. And it's a vicious affair. You've got pretty much the same numbers on either side, around 8,000. Again, uh, estimates can vary. Um, the, uh, the British, the English, uh, Harold's army, the Anglo-Saxons, uh, um, uh, a large peasant under under trained, under armed, and so on. Um, third, they called it like a peasant militia. Um, but um, the core of Harold's army is one of the best fighting units in Europe at the time. A two thousand strong elite, uh, the House Carls. Huge. These are these guys on the left there. Um, well armed, well shielded, well trained professional soldiers. Kind of. King's got bodyguard, if you like. The core of William's army, around 8,000 strong, they're all professional, William's army, um, is the cavalry. 2,000 strong cavalry. So a bit of a, a bit of a, an advantage in the cavalry, uh, plus 2,000 archers and 4,000 infantry. The Battle of Hastings, there's the hill, uh, Senlac Hill, a fluctuating affair. The English tactic is to, they're on the high ground with their shield walls, repulse uh, the Norman attacking up the hill. They're successfully doing that. Um, uh, there's one moment where uh, the Britons today, you see in this map, a schematic map, um, the, uh, the English forces are here on the hill and the Normans, um, infantry in front, cavalry behind, are attacking up the hill. And to the left, it was the Britons and they're being pushed down by and routed, basically, by this um, flank of the British army, the English army. And um, they're going, the English are going to pursue these Britons, and that's going to lead to sort of uh, a lot of death and stuff, and rumours of William's death. And that's where he lifts up his visor. Do you see a famous moment in the battle, lifts up his visor saying, no, I'm not, I haven't been killed, I'm still alive, I've got a new horse, and uh, rally around me. And so the battle starts again. Uh, these different charges to try and get through the flanks by the Normans is not going to work. They're going to do a central charge. And the key turning point in the day, of course, is going to be the death of King Harold. Um, perhaps with an arrow in his eye, not completely, um, not completely improbable, um, but sort of also on other chronicles as pointing to um, uh, uh, the fact that sort of four, four nobles, including William, are going to hunt down um, Harold, um, sort of behind some bush somewhere and um, club him to death. And William is king. 